The Heat lost their fourth straight game last night against the Denver Nuggets at home by 12 points. And we have to start asking ourselves, what is the ceiling of this Heat team? And do the Heat need to make extensional and big time switch ups in the offseason? Because I am not so sure that this build can win an NBA title. Because when you think about the Heat Nuggets, Every game goes the exact same way. And I get it. They're in the Western Conference. So it's not like you have to play them more than twice a year. But here's the thing. You do have to beat a team in the West to win the NBA championship. And to me, if you want to look over to the football, I know people are continuing to say this online and Producer Smitty's been saying it. Nikola Jokic just might be the European Patrick Mahomes where you're lining up and facing that dude in the championship round every single time. And the Heat can't beat him. This happens every game, by the way. It happened last night. The Heat Nuggets matchup, right? National television, big game, two good organizations right now. Nuggets jump out to an 8-point, 10-point lead after the first quarter. Heat make a run, keep it a little close at halftime. It's like five, six-point games. It's like, oh, shit. Like, we have a chance in this one. And third quarter comes around. Oh, my God, Miami took the lead. We could beat Denver. Nah, you get blown out in the fourth quarter and you lose by double digits. It's every single time. I'm not so sure this Heat build can ever beat the current Denver Nuggets build. And that's why I think the Heat season might be over. Because you're going to be playing that team over in the West from Denver in the title game if you even get there. But right now, this Heat team has so many problems, I don't even know if they are going to get there. Let me know your thoughts before we talk about the Heat more in depth here. Are the Heat cooked? Type C for cooked, type F for fine. Get your votes down below. I know a lot of people have been negative around the Miami Heat lately. Get your votes down below. Well, let's just set the facts here. The Heat have now lost four straight games. Uh, Dallas, OKC, Washington, and then Denver last night. And now the record stands at 35-30, and 30, which is just five games above 500. If you do the math here, before those four losses, they were nine games above 500, which was the best point of the entire season. Because if you remember, that he'd actually got to eight games above 500 and then lost seven straight. And then battled their way all the way back to nine games over 500 and then lost four straight. I hope we don't lose another four straight and lose eight total in a row to have that same little thing where you go up uh, eight games over 500, lose seven, go up nine, lose eight. That'd be quite the disaster. But you look at these last four games Miami have lost. Two on the road, two at home. You lost at Dallas 114-108. You lost at OKC 107-100. Those two on a back-to-back, -back, if you do not remember. And then you lose Sunday in that devastating, horrific loss against the Wizards at home 110-108. And then obviously last night's game against the Nuggets 100-88. to The thing is with this last four-game stretch where they've lost four in a row and the sky is falling, right? The outlook could be different here if the Heat just took care of business on home against the Wizards on Sunday. Like, say they beat Washington by 15, 20 points, which we expected them to do. This, this stretch doesn't look as bad because if we're going to be honest here, even at home, I never expected us to beat Denver. That's how sad it's gotten. They are so much better than us. I don't ever expect to be able to beat them because they don't get mentally rattled and they are just way more talented than us. And Michael Malone is one hell of a basketball coach. I would have liked the split here, and I think you should have got a split here. Considering you were up double digits at, the, on, at halftime on the road against OKC, and then you shit the bed in the uh, second half, that was disappointing. Same could be said for the game against Dallas. You came out and scored 40 damn points, basically, in the first quarter against Dallas, and then you could barely muster up any offense in the second half. So the theme here is that if you take away Denver and Washington, you just look at these two games right here, you had a chance to put up a good record in these last four games, but you shit the bed in the second half. And nothing is going right. It starts with your two stars, Jimmy Butler and Bam, which we'll get to in just a second. But when the Heat are going right, you are seeing Jimmy Butler get to the free throw line, which has severely went downhill over the last four games, by the way. Only shooting four free throws a night in those four games. That's not okay. I know Eric Spolster talked about the officiating and potential changes post-All-Star break in the post-game conference yesterday, but Jimmy's not getting to the line. Bam struggling with his efficiency. You're just missing scoring, and I think Tyler Hero, who knows when he's going to return, is actually more important to this Heat team than us fans want to admit because even though he's not the best defender and he's not the most efficient scorer, 
He's still averaging 20-plus points a game, and he's not afraid to take big shots late, and he's not afraid to make them because he's actually one of the best closers. I wouldn't, make, wouldn't say best closers, but one of the best clutch shot makers in the entire NBA. And he's certainly the second player on this Heat team that I'd want taking a shot late in a game behind Jimmy Butler. It'd go Jimmy 1, Tyler Hero 2, no debate for me. Nothing's going right with this team. Defense hasn't been good as well, but then you see the offense. I mean, scoring 110, 108 points is your most points scored in the last four games. That's not okay. Like, you get 100 against OKC, 88 against the Nuggets. You're, you're not scoring. This is an issue. We'll talk more about these issues in just a bit and the staple of the Heat in the Eastern Conference. But we are sponsored by Factor Meals. Head over to factormeals.com slash heatchat50 and use that code heatchat50 to get 50% off. I love Factor Meals. I just got a new supply to my house just a couple days ago. That's my favorite part about Factor. It's delivered right to your door, so you don't have to go to the grocery store if you don't want to. And once they're delivered right to your door, you can store them just in your refrigerator up to 7 to 10 days and just pop them in the microwave when you're ready to eat them. And all it takes is just two minutes to heat up and enjoy. And they're not no fugazi. They're no bad meals. They are <laughs> dietitian approved chef-crafted meals that taste just like you got a nice little $20 steak, if you will, at a restaurant. That's how good these things taste. My favorite part as well, no prep, no mess. You don't have to do anything. All you got to do is pop in the microwave and enjoy a meal that is restaurant quality that are delivered straight to your door. Get started today by going to factormeals.com slash heatchat50 and use code heatchat50 to get 50% off. One more time, that's code HEATCHAT50 and factormeals.com slash HEATCHAT50. That link is in the description and comments of today's video. All right, let's pop over to the Eastern Conference standings because after last night, these are how things stand in the Eastern Conference. You see your heat, 8th, 35-30. That's not good. And we were once talking, the Heat were, I think, a half game out of fourth place before this four-game losing streak when they were 39 and, uh, no, no, 39, 35 and 26, they were right there in that 4-5 game. And you could argue, well, there was a chance if you get hot here in the final 20 games, you could threaten Milwaukee and Cleveland for the three seed, potentially. Well, now you're going the opposite way, and you're sitting at eight behind Indiana Philly. You're not going to fall behind eight unless you completely collapse because Chicago's still under 500 and Atlanta. Honestly, the play is so fucking stupid. Excuse my language, fellas, because the Hawks, why are they even going to get an extra game? They're terrible. But the best you could do in the East is in that 4-5 seed range. And that would have to require you to go absolutely nuclear because you're already three and a half, four games back of them now. And are you going to make that up in the final 18 to 20 games of the season? Very, very unlikely. So now the best I'm thinking is you're going to be in that six range to seven. You're fighting for your playing lives again. And it feels like, how are we in the same situation for th the third year in a row out of four? Like, if you look at the last four years, including this one, obviously playing last year, you're likely going to be fighting for your lives to not be in the play in this year. 2022, you were the Eastern or the one seed, so there's a good year. But the year prior to that, you were the sixth seed and you narrowly escaped the play in there. Like, you're going to be in that range again. It's just a question of are you going to grab that sixth seed over Philly and Indiana or are you going to have to play one of those two teams in the first play-in game and then maybe play either Boston in the first round or wherever the two seed is. But you have to get better production out of your stars. That is just a fact. You're not going to go anywhere in the NBA unless your top two players are playing like guys who can lead a team to a title, which these two have done. Or in the playoffs over the last four seasons. But over the last four games, in this four-game losing streak, they have been abysmal. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They've been horrible. 18 points a game for Jimmy, shooting 45% from the field, 18% from three in those four games. But the problem I'm having with these two guys, first of all, Bam shooting 38.5% is just absolutely fucking ridiculous. Sorry to use my language again. That's how bad this is. The free throw percentage. 75 for Jimmy, but the concerning part about that is like if he's shooting 9 of 12 from the free throw line and shooting 75%, sure, don't care. Would have liked it obviously to be 80, but I'm not going to complain about it. 
But that 75% of the last four games is on th four attempts. He's shooting three or four. Jimmy Butler is at the best, and the Heat offense is at its best when he's getting double-digit free throw attempts a night. And I know that's not sustainable, but you could at least give me five to eight free throws a game. Four? Jimmy's got to do a better job of being assertive in this Heat offense and attacking the rim. Now let's talk about Bam at a bio. Because I thought he played really good against Denver yesterday. And he does actually rise to the occasion against Jokic every time they match up. Jokic only had 10, 12 points last night. He did a good job. Um, but 50% from the line, this is, this is bad. This is bad. I believe that is 2.75 on five and a half attempts for Bam over the last four games. 13 points for him. He has really struggled. And I'm starting to pinpoint that game on Saturday afternoon against the Utah Jazz where he collided with Taylor Hendricks, left the game for a little bit, and returned. He has just not been good since then. Um, it's been an issue. Uh, the Heat obviously won that game after against the Pistons and then won on this four-game losing streak. But Bam has not been the same player since that collision with Taylor Hendricks. And after looking at these stats here, I think you guys could come to the same conclusion that I've already came to and kind of displayed and outlined for you all. The Heat and the NBA are only going to be able to go as far as you star the stars take you. And if your star players, Jimmy and Bam, are putting up numbers like that, you are simply not going to win basketball games. You're not. And you could say the same for every team in the NBA maybe besides the Boston Celtics because their roster has four or five guys that can go off. But even if you look to Denver, if Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic are putting up those two numbers, they're not going to win. You look to Cleveland, Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland doing that, they're not going to win. Milwaukee, Dame and Giannis, they put up those numbers, they're not going to win. So this isn't just a Miami problem. It's an NBA problem. Like, if your top two guys are going to consistently be as bad and an inefficient as Jimmy and Bam have been over the last four games, you're not going to win. So the thing that I'm struggling with is, like, I don't know if I am going to say the season's over. It's just a really matter of fact that Jimmy and Bam have to play better. And now the question is, and I, I've been sitting on this one a little bit, and I thought... The guy on Twitter that I love, I know some of you guys like as well, Chef Trilly on Twitter, had a good point um, as producer Smitty, who's a Celtics fan, really does not like that guy. But uh, um, he was giving the double birds, actually, behind the scenes here. Uh, how wild is that? Behind the scenes, double birds, crazy. <laughs> um, but he said yesterday on Twitter that Jimmy and Bam are a top five most impactful duo in the entire NBA. I agree. I, it, it, the proof is in the pudding when you've been to the finals twice as a duo in the last four years and conference finals three times. But I don't know if you're ever going to be able to win in the NBA if those two are your top two scorers, which is why you were hoping Tyler Hero was going to take that next step to be the best scorer on this team. So Jimmy and Bam wouldn't have to be the top two scoring guys. Or that's why you were trying to trade for Damian Lillard. Can Jimmy and Bam win an NBA title? That's the biggest question around Heat Twitter right now and surrounding this Miami Heat organization because if you think that the answer is no, well then how do you fix this roster? Let me know your thoughts down below. Type Y for yes, type N for no. I alluded to it just before I asked you that question, but I kind of agree with Chef Trilly. Not as your top two scores. I mean, they are just simply not efficient enough. They don't have enough ability to be... Let's just say this. Jimmy... Obviously, he's gone nuclear in the postseason. I love Jimmy. He's the best leader in the NBA, in my opinion. But if your top two guys are not going to be able to consistently hit three-point shots, what? You, how are you going to win games in the NBA? Like, it, it is so frustrating to watch our two best players not be able to stress the opposing defense from beyond the arc. It is unbelievably annoying. I, I just don't see a way the Heat are going to win the finals and win a title if these two guys are your top scorers. It would take injuries to other teams. It would also take another guy coming here. Maybe Donovan Mitchell. I don't know. But, like, that's why Damian Lillard, to me, was such a big deal for Miami in the offseason is because he could be that guy to stress the defense from beyond the arc and threaten you from deep and be a 25-plus per game point per game scorer, which would allow Jimmy and Bam to do what they do so great, which is average around 20 and be the biggest impact duo on the defensive end in the entire NBA. 
But obviously, we don't have that score to take that burden off Jimmy. And bam. It's unfortunate. Well, I'll do it for today's video. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel because, well, no matter what is going on around the Miami Heat, I'm going to cover them. If it's going bad, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. If it's going good, I'm also not going to buy into the hype too much. Probably will. Um, that's what it is. That's how what it is what it being a fan. Um, but make sure you do subscribe because we're going to kick up our watch parties once again. And we are going to have a 100% watch party rate starting next Monday against the Philadelphia 76ers. Hopefully all the way until the NBA postseason. And if the Heat have another run in them, stay tuned for that.